I think the gentleman from Georgia, uh, Mr. McCarthy, about uh, about a year ago, uh, former Exim employee Johnny Gutierrez sat at that table and took the Fifth Amendment when we were attempting to question him about some of his activities at the Exim Bank. About six weeks ago, uh, you sat right where you're sitting today and and told us that Mr. Gutierrez had been indicted by the Justice Department just two days before that particular hearing, and then about a week later, Mr. Gutierrez pled guilty to bribery and fraud charges. You also indicated that day that there may be more indictments coming in the Gutierrez case, and you said there are 31 open fraud investigations and there may be indictments in some of those. Has any of that changed? Is that still the number, 31, or is it a bigger number today, or is it a smaller number? Have there been more indictments? Where are we at? I think our current number, I think, is 29 open investigations. 29. Right, okay. as of today. What about the indictment issue? The indictments, um, I believe that we've had, we have had some new cases that we've reported, and it's still the same. When we have cases that we investigate, um, the fact that we're investigating that matter means that there is a possibility. When you say new cases you've reported, does that mean there, there are new referrals? Are the 31? Are the 29? Um, I would need to check as the timing as to when I, when I last testified. I believe we've had other indictments, guilty pleas um, that I've reported to you. Do you have an idea how many? Uh, a handful. A handful in just the past six weeks? More indictments, more guilty pleas? I need to check on the records of that. But for example, there was someone who was arrested. Are they in the Gutierrez case, you said, or other cases? There are other cases. So we have Mr. Gutierrez who's been in, indicted and pled guilty. And in the last six weeks, you've had other indictments and guilty pleas at, with uh, employees in those 29 open fraud investigations. Not with employees. Not with employees. Not with employees. These are, we have cases that are various stages. I understand. So there are people who have been indicted who have pled guilty recently. There are people who have previously been arrested who have pled guilty. There are people who previously pled guilty who have been sentenced. And so these aren't employees, but there they're are people from, from uh, the, the public sector or, or the private sector trying to get financing from the Exim Bank. That's correct. Okay. And had they received financing? Or was it in the, in, it was, or was it while they were trying to get financing? In these particular matters, it was they had already received. They had already gotten they, taxpayer they money. Defaulted. Yeah. Okay. So now, are you familiar with uh, the the company NewSat? Yes. Um, and did XM loan them some money? Yes, they did. Was it a direct loan? Um, I believe so. Yeah. You know how many millions of dollars? I believe it was north of two hundred million dollar commitment, although it hasn't been all dispersed at this point. North of two hundred. And uh, was that, were you the largest financer of, of NewSat when they were uh, seeking financing for the, for the business? I believe the U.S. Exim Bank is the lead financer. You were the lead financer. And isn't it true that NewSat's now went bankrupt? That's correct. And how much are the taxpayers uh, on the hook for? Um, I believe at this point it's around $150 million, but there's potential for recoveries in that matter that could reduce that amount. Potentially $150 million of 300, north of $200 million that the XM loan to this, uh, this company. Um, a review commissioned by independent NUSAT directors reported, quote, appalling corporate behavior, complete lack of control at NUSAT, including opulent $10,000 dinners, extensive overseas travel, millions in executive bonus and raises, uh, bonuses and raises, tax evasion, and $400,000 in undisclosed payments to a yacht company owned by NewSat's former CEO. Pretty bad stuff going on. Um, how did this all fly under the bank's radar? We've announced, we've been aware, this transaction has been our, on our radar screen for some time since last summer. We've announced that we're going to conduct an inspection of this transaction. We're currently in the process of gathering documents, of we're going to be speaking with people. And since I know Since last that summer, what my understanding is they were still getting money as, as, as late as last summer. So. Or I believe the, that there were issues that were raised by, by an independent auditor and the Australian securities regulators last summer, and at that point, I believe XM uh, stopped dispersing on that, on that commitment. Um, I would ask, uh, like to place on the record a copy of a report, uh, which includes some limited redactions. Excuse me, back up. Without objection, so, uh, so entered. Um, so you're familiar with this, Mr. McCarthy? I'm familiar with the existence of the report. I'm not familiar with its contents. Let personally. me read a little bit to you. Uh, this is from Mr. Rudd himself. Again, these are part of the independent directors here at NewSat who commissioned this report. Within two hours of commencing, let me back up. I've been at NewSat for six weeks now in the report, one of the confidential documents. Within, or documents, not confidential, it's been redacted. 
Within two hours of commencing, I realized the company had some serious performance issues and that there was a total disconnect between what the lenders were expecting in terms of financial outcomes and what was actually happening. Of course, this ultimately resulted in the earnings downgrade announcement into the market, but it also led me to look into past activities. Much of this information was fed to income directors. So within two hours, this guy comes in. This is, this is clear back in early summer last year. Within two hours of being there, he says there are big problems. So what we want to know is how in the world did the bank miss this? As part of our inspection, we're going to be looking into the due diligence that the bank conducted or did not conduct on this transaction, but I don't have that information at this time. So you mentioned 29 uh, ongoing open fraud investigations. Is this one of the 29? Right now, what we've announced is that we're going to conduct an inspection, which is different than an investigation. It's more in the nature of an audit where we go in and try to figure out what happened in the transaction. Depending on how what evidence develops, it could be converted or referred into an investigation, but it's not an investigation at this time. And what, what kicks it to the investigation level? I mean, if, if the fact that the taxpayer is on the hook for $150 million, you've got this guy figuring it out within two hours. Um, you were the lead financer in this deal. What kicks it up to a real investigation? It would be evidence of uh, fraud or misrepresentations that were made to the Exim Bank as opposed to bad business practices. Well, wow, this sure, seems, sure looks like fraud to me. I think it would look like fraud to the American taxpayer and um, something that obviously we need to, uh, need to get to the bottom of. My time is over. I apologize. I will, I will 